Okay, it's Cold Dude Clem time again. Anyway, um, somebody asked me if they, um, if I'd do a tour of my workbench, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and hopefully, I'm trusting my high definition camera, in the hopes that it's actually going to record. So, yes, I do have a lot of schematics on the wall. These are quite outdated now, I don't really refer to them much anymore, I've gotta put some new ones up there. Well, yeah, I got some stuff on the bench that I'm going to be working with in some future videos. I'm going to be making a little AM radio transmitter with this stuff. Of course, that's not all of the stuff that's going to be in it, but that's just some testing purposes. Uh, we've got my two multimeters, my faulty meter here, which um, I call it my faulty meter because the current measurement on this no longer works. I've checked all the fuses inside, they're alright, but it always just throws up some strange garbage measurement when I'm trying to measure amps. In fact, I'll show you, there's nothing connected to it. I'll just take the leads out. Put it onto amps, and uh, yeah, it's reading something that's not even there, so... Something has definitely gone wrong with that. Measures volts and resistance just fine though. And this is the CD driver, well, DVD driver, my old, com well, not my old computer, my current computer. I don't know why I said my old computer. And as you can see, something's gone wrong here. It won't come out any further than this, and it won't go in any further than that, so. That's another project for Call Dude Clones Electronic Workshop. I think this is just a mechanical issue. Maybe a cam has popped out of alignment or something. And yeah, we've got my oscilloscope. A few various meters here. Transistor tester. Another transistor tester. Little power supply module. This is the staccato controller for a Tesla coil. Which I'm rebuilding. Yes, I'm going to get back into the Tesla coils sooner or later. Got my little um, drawers with various components in them. My um, thermostat as well. To help keep the room nice and warm. And a nice consistent temperature. And some valves and a little tiny oscilloscope. And of course, under it, it's bigger brother. I found an old microwave oven transformer that I've apparently taken the secondary off, even though I don't even remember doing that, and de-shunted. So, might be doing some things with that. Got my LC meter here for measuring current and, uh... Oh, uh, what's in it? Not current. Inductance and capacitance, I couldn't remember. And of course, my homemade tape recorder. Got one of my other cameras here, sitting on top of the printer. Unfortunately, this camera that I'm holding at the moment is the only high-definition camera that I have. And I think I'm probably destroying the, um, the memory card in this thing, because, you know, I'm formatting, then recording, then formatting, then recording, then formatting, and recording, you know, I don't think that's going to be very good for the card in there, so... When I start doing the Call Duty Clems electronic workshop, you know, cleaning up a little bit as well, I want to get one of those webcams that can output video at 1080p, and I mean proper 1080p, not some lower resolution upscaled, actual 1080p sensor. And 60 frames a second would be ideal, but I'll, I'll settle for 30. I'll find a webcam like that for under 50 quid. Then I'll be back in business with the Call Duke Clems Electronic Workshop videos, because I don't know how much longer this camera is going to last. And for those of you who want to see my rant set up in high definition, well, here it is. So, I've got this microphone. Um, fixed to a chair stand. This camera's making the floor look a lot messier than it really is, but, you know, because of the brightness gain and everything. 
So that's connected to the computer's microphone input, well, through a little microphone preamp. And this is the camera that's used for my rants. And yes, sorry about the noise, I have to have the fan on because I'm getting rather hot. But yeah, this is the camera used for my rants. That's connected to the computer through one of those little USB dongle things. So a composite video input on one side and USB on the other. And here it is in Open Broadcaster. And again, I've stupidly left the display capture on, so I'll turn that off. There we go. So yeah, you can see me on the computer. So, when I'm doing my rants, I've got this transformer here powering this camera directly because this camera can run off AC so that's getting about 13 volts AC and also coming off the transformer I have this rectifier which then goes into this inline switch and over to the light it's got a nice light for illuminating my face so when I do my rants I turn all the other lights out and turn this light on Start the computer re recording and I'm ready to go. I think it's better that I use a standard definition camera when I'm doing my rounds because I show my face in those videos and if I showed my face in high definition it would probably break your screen. So yeah, I think that's a good thing that I'm using a standard definition camera there. Now we come to my baby. My babies! My baby! My computer. I'll take you on a little tour around all this. I have Windows 10 LTSC installed on here. And although I would like to put that ISO up on the internet so other people can download it, trouble is I'd get into a lot of legal issues with that. You know, I don't want to be done for piracy and everything. So it just has to stay here. But I've got everything I need on here. I have my web browser, my mod plug tracker, all my various audio and video stuff. I even have a Windows XP virtual machine set up so I can play some of the older stuff. Because, as you probably know, not everything runs on Windows 10. So I can play games like Ford Racing 2 here. Which I know this won't run on Windows 10 because certain things that Windows XP has that Windows 10 doesn't. Keyboard. It's difficult doing this in one, doing this with one hand. Okay, so that's the joypad now. Okay, now we have joypad control. Single player for challenge. I'm not going to bore you with hours and hours and hours of gameplay. Actually, why is this still? Windowed should be full screen. There we go. I think I've crashed it now because I'm trying to do a video. Okay, well, seems to have recovered. Concept. Let's see. Any good races unlocked? Okay, I guess that'll do. Yeah, this is hard to do one-handed. I'm so glad I dumped VirtualBox and went with VMware. So much better. I'm just using the free version of VMware Workstation 16. And as you can see, games run just fine. Even got my old friend Xpadder here, that's working as you can see. 
It's like play games like Sonic before the sequel or after the sequel. Okay, well, we don't want to be boring old Sonic, do we now? We want to be Tails. Let's see if I can get this to actually go proper full screen. Yeah, there we go. Jeez, does it ever shut up? And check this out. Even the cutscenes play, which use flash. It's showing a little bit more than it should, but you know. That works pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna go to a level here, see what we can find. Stupid mouse, get out of the screen. Level select. What one's before Moon Mansion? Technology Tree. I don't like Technology Tree, but I like the cutscene that plays before Moon Mansion. Alright, let's go to Technology Tree then. At least the music's nice and funky. Even though I'm not a big fan of this particular level. Alright, time to get revenge on this thing that's caused me so much grief. Don't hurt my little tailsy. Take that. Dales, watch where you're going. Come on, Dales. Let's go. No, Sonic, I'm too scared. Yeah. Could also play some of my other old favourites. I cannot get this one to go properly full screen. It just crashes if I do, but better this than nothing. Anyway, I think that's enough for the games for now. But enough about the games, I'm sure you want to see all the electronic stuff that's behind it. So, under the monitor, we have my Vestafire tape recorder. And this is a really handy little tool when I'm doing drums for my music. Because I connect the computer up to this, record the drums, and it adds all that lovely tape saturation and everything. It just makes it sound so much more alive. I've got my homemade amplifier there with level meter, headphone output, and mixer input and everything. And two speakers. And my clock. Well, that's actually a timer, but I'm using it as a clock. It keeps really good time as well. It was made in, like, 1986, I think. Or maybe 88, I don't remember. But yeah, must have set the time on this. That keeps, that keeps really good time. And over here on the wall, this rather dilapidated wall, apart from all the little tailsy pictures. Okay, that one's not tails. That one's not tails. That one's not tails. That one's not tails, and that one's not tails, but yeah. got a couple of little controls which I can adjust easily from my bed. So, this is the volume control, an external volume control that I built for the amplifier. And this micro switch 
is connected in line with a relay that's in this timer and I've set that relay to come on at a certain time the time that I usually get up so when I wake up and I press this micro switch if I don't hear the relay click I know it's not time to get up yet but if I press the switch and I do hear the relay click I know it is time to get up that way I don't have to wake myself up, open my eyes, look at the time and then have trouble getting back to sleep got my homemade LED bedside lights capacitor dropper yeah it's probably a piss poor power factor but yeah, who cares and speed control for my fan running on a huge long wire over to where the fan actually is yep so I can do all that from the comfort of my bed now if I could just find a solution for having to get up in the middle of the night and go into the bathroom and having a pee that would be really good maybe I should just attach a hose pipe to my willy have the other end dangling into the toilet wouldn't have to get out of bed then wouldn't need much hose pipe either and this little thing with the two valves on it this is another thing I, I, let me just turn this fan off so you can hear me better so this is another little thing that I made a little buffer circuit if you will so I can switch the tubes in and out and this obviously turns it on and off And what I use this for is when I'm doing my music albums I have the computer's input coming into the input and it goes through the tubes and back out through the to the computer's line input that just gives it that tube sound to it I personally don't hear any difference when the sound's going through the tubes but other people say they do so that's why that's it. The other reason why this is here is because I can connect anything that has a very high impedance output such as my tube guitar preamp here. I can connect that up to that and then connect this up to the computer because this will take a very... this can take anything with a really high impedance input and spit out a relatively low impedance output so yeah, it's useful when I'm using that as well. And finally, that brings us to my work in progress vintage audio setup. Still haven't got a new cartridge for this record player because you know the way things are right now. I want to go completely vintage with this setup. Find a vintage amplifier. This is what I've got at the moment. It's not particularly vintage. It's not particularly clean. Trouble is, this camera makes things look a lot messier than they really are. So I want to find a much more vintage amplifier, vintage cassette recorder, already got the reel-to-reel, -reel. vintage tuner, and we'll be well away. And finally, there's my other three reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, which are in various stages of being repaired. This one keeps blowing a capacitor, and even though it don't exceed the voltage of the capacitor or have it the wrong way round, for some reason that just keeps happening. Also, the amplifier on this is very temperamental. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I got my other Sony. This records but doesn't erase, so I've got to find out what's up with that. And the other Sony Cassette Master has one of these actually. Where only one channel of the amplifier works. So yeah, I've got to find out what's up with that. That's basically a tour of everything. 
I've got to go and look for a better camera. So until next time, goodbye.